Today's message is entitled, The Battle for the Body and the Soul, Part 2. This is a continuation of the last study, because in Part 2, we're going to look at especially the immune system as it relates to vitamin D. But first, we need to talk about what is taking place in our world. We are seeing an attack taking place upon the Constitution of the United States of America. We are seeing attack even on the Declaration of Independence because every citizen of America have the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And during this coronavirus crisis, many people have lost their liberty and pursuit of happiness because they cannot open their jobs. We have seen an attack upon the amendments, especially the right to assemble. Many churches are closed. The civil liberties on, of Americans are under attack. And America, we are seeing it acting like a communistic country whereby governors are taking upon themselves power which do not belong to them and are giving orders and telling people to do this and that is an attack upon the civil liberties of Americans. And we were told in the Bible, Revelation chapter 13, that America will speak as a dragon and persecute. And we are seeing now the power going to the government and what they are doing with their power, and it is a loss of civil liberties. We were told in the spirit of prophecy that the final movements will be rapid ones, and what a year 2020 has been, very rapid. Changes that we have never seen before has been taking place in the year 2020. For some people, 2020 is the worst year of their entire life for what they have seen taking place. But we as Christians, we are to know these things would be taking place and we as Christians need to be ready. So therefore, we're gonna look at Ephesians chapter six and we're gonna be talking about the armor of God. This is how we can be secure so that we can be saved at last when Jesus comes. Because all these signs taking place, the prophecies being fulfilled are showing us that Jesus is very soon to come back for his bride and take them home. Now when we go to Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. We need the armor of God because Satan is as a roaring lion seeking to devour, seeking to make people lost, to lose their salvation is what Satan is doing. The wiles of the devil. And the wiles spoken of in this verse is speaking about Satan's tricks, his clever schemes to deceive people. And he is doing a mighty work of deception even right now. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. So we may see many evil taking place upon the earth and we're saying this person is the cause of it. But what is taking place is Satan and the evil angels are working upon men upon planet earth to do much evil. We see the people doing the wickedness upon the earth, but we don't see behind the scenes the evil angels at work impressing people to do wickedness. Verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Praise God, we need to stand firm, stand upon the truth, 
stand upon the word of God and be faithful. Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with the truth. It is the truth that sanctifies us. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We are sanctified by the word of God. Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. We need Christ's righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Jesus has a gospel of peace. Satan delights in war and confusion and chaos and riots. But God has a gospel of peace. We have a message of peace. Reconciliation is what Jesus wants his Christians to be doing in these last days. Reconciling people back to God who is their Lord and Savior. The gospel of peace. While so much people are saddened and distressed, we have a message of hope and of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So while Satan and his evil angels are sending fiery darts upon the Christians, we can reflect and block these fiery darts with a shield. And the shield is the shield of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We must exercise faith and believe in the word of God and believe in the promises of God. And therefore, we will not be hit with the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is a sword. And it cuts. Therefore, we must use the word of God to cut through error, to cut through deception, and to cut through our carnal hearts. The word of God can break through because it is a sword, a double edged, powerful sword. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We need the armor of God so that we can be ready for the second coming of Jesus. The armor of God protects us. And today's message, and we're talking about the battle for the body, we're going to be talking about how vitamin D protects our immune system from pathogens, from viruses, from bacteria. We're going to look at information which for the most part has been hidden. The media is not covering this truth. They are only pushing forward with a vaccine. But God has given us the eight laws of health and one of the laws of health is sunshine. And as you talk about sunshine, you must speak about vitamin D, which I mentioned before. It is a pro-steroid hormone. This powerful vitamin, steroid hormone, will boost up your body and it has a powerful effect against the coronavirus, which the media is not covering. So therefore, I want to share with you some pictures so that we can get a visualization of how powerful vitamin D affects our immune system and can keep us healthy in this time of this coronavirus where so many are panicking and worrying. So in this diagram, it shows that SARS-CoV-2 positivity. Individuals who have a vitamin D level at or above 55 versus those that have 20 nanograms per ml. Now 30 and below is when you have a deficiency, but truly the number should be bumped up to really 40. If you're anything lower than 40, you are deficient and vitamin D regulates genes. Vitamin D, different tissues and cells have vitamin D receptors awaiting for the vitamin D to do vital functions in your body. So whenever your levels of vitamin D are low, your entire system will be affected. It's a hormone. 
Now, in this study that was done, if you have a vitamin D level 55 versus those who have 20, you have a 20, 53 lower risk of coronavirus positivity for being positive for coronavirus by raising the vitamin D level here to 55. The next is about hospitalizations due to COVID. Vitamin D levels at or above 30 versus less than 30. If you have it above 30, you have a 52 lower risk of being hospitalized for COVID. Now let's talk about death. Vitamin D levels at or above 10 versus less than 10 nanograms per ml, you have a 90% lower risk of dying from COVID if you have vitamin D levels above 10. The ideal is to be between 60 to 100. If you're in that level, you're greatly protected and your whole body will be functioning well because the hormone will do its work upon your cells and your body will be strengthened. Now, as we know, coronavirus attacks the lungs. It's a respiratory issue people have when they get coronavirus. Now, in this picture here, we are gonna see the role of vitamin D plays in protecting your lungs. What vitamin D does, it reduces the likelihood of getting viral or bacterial respiratory infections. It also helps to prevent the body's immune system from overreacting to an infection and causing acute respiratory distress syndrome, also referred to as ARDS. That's the main problem that people have when they get the coronavirus. They have trouble with breathing. They get acute respiratory distress syndrome. Now, here's what takes place. If a person gets the coronavirus, viral particles enter into the lungs. And as we see in the alveoli, the virus causes inflammation. But most is caused by the immune response. The immune response, they get upon the scene because we have an intruder. They set an alarm. And when that happens, an Im immune response takes place. Then inflammatory fluids pool and prevent gas exchange causing breathing distress, which is the ARDS. So that's how individuals have trouble with breathing because the inflammatory fluids pool and prevent the gas exchange and they have trouble breathing. Now, vitamin D is important with the maturation of the immune cells. These white blood cells all have vitamin D receptors, which is the lymphocytes, the monocytes, the neutrophils, and the dendritic cells. We studied these, these different leukocytes in the last study. Now, once SARS-CoV-2 has been successfully successful at replicating itself and spreading to surrounding cells, mild to moderate symptoms progress. So what are the symptoms that some people have? Sore throat, cough, fever, and muscle aches as a part of a normal immune response to the virus. Now we have T cell responses secreted inflammatory cytokines are essential to the successful elimination of COVID-19 as happens in most people. Now, that cytokine storm, which created the problem with the acute respiratory distress syndrome, when the cytokine storm and that inflammation which took place, in some people, the immune response goes awry. And at this point, you have hyperinflammatory state, referred to as that cytokine storm as depicted in this diagram. The cytokine storm is a leading theory that explains why some people have a severe reaction to coronaviruses while others only experience mild symptoms. 
moderate levels of inflammation are associated with mild, moderate symptoms of COVID-19, whereas the cytokine storm generates a hyperinflammatory state associated with acute, severe COVID-19 symptoms. Now in this diagram, we see the COVID-19 enters into the lungs. Inflammatory signals take place. We have the dendritic cells, the monocytes, and the macrophages there on the scene. And then a cytokine storm is created. And when that cytokine storm is created, individuals can have multi-organ failure, hyperinflammation syndrome, and worse, death. But that can be prevented if they have sufficient levels of vitamin D. The cytokine storm results from a sudden acute increase in circulating levels of different pro-inflammatory cytokines. One is called interleukin-6, interleukin-1. These are produced by the T-cells. These inflammatory cytokines, in addition to the ongoing replication and the spread of the virus, trigger more immune cells involvement and tissue damage that leads to acute respiratory distress, multiple organ failure, and possibly death. By dampening the cytokine storm, we can reduce the severity of symptoms and the risk of death. So this is where vitamin D can help to reduce that cytokine storm. And it does it by increasing the anti-inflammatory cytokines, anti-inflammatory, so that is going to reduce the inflammatory cytokines, and it reduces the inflammatory cytokines, the interleukin-6. So the vitamin D acts as a modulator. It regulates and the troops that's coming in. So if there's too much, to back down so that it doesn't go crazy with the cytokine storm. But for you having your immune system to regulate it with your regulation, regulatory T cells, you need sufficient levels of vitamin D in your body so that you do not have all these problems with breathing. Now, in America, 42% of all Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And when you come to the Hispanics, they are 72% deficient in vitamin D. And when it comes to the African American population, 82% deficient in vitamin D. So we have a major problem. And this problem is not only a problem in America, the problem is worldwide. There is a deficiency that individuals have worldwide in vitamin D. So in of all the Americans, now when you're looking at all of them, only 5% of Americans that are African American, only 5% have sufficient vitamin D levels. And for those who are Hispanic, only 10%. And this is the reason why many people who have gotten coronavirus and that got very sick, and those who have died from this virus, many of them are black and Hispanic because their levels of vitamin D are usually the lowest of all the population. But if we increase our vitamin D levels, we will not have all of this problem with the coronavirus. Because remember, it has a 99% recovery rate. So what is taking place is, which you probably did not hear about because this is not on the news, because the news is only focusing on vaccine, 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 as if there is nothing else that can be done. There are over 100 scientists, doctors, and leading authorities calling now for an increased vitamin D use to combat COVID-19. And I'm gonna share with you this letter and what this letter, which is appealing to the leading authorities for an increased use 
of vitamin D to combat coronavirus. So I'm going to read to you different sections from this letter, which is on the website vitamindforall.com or .org. It says to all governments, public health officials, doctors, and health care workers, research shows that low vitamin D levels almost certainly promote COVID-19 infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. Given its safety, we call for immediate widespread increased vitamin D intakes. Vitamin D modulates thousands of genes and many aspects of immune function, both innate and adaptive. The scientific evidence shows that higher vitamin D blood levels are associated with lower rates of SARS-CoV-2 infections. There are hundreds of studies, meta-analysis that are done all over the world showing that individuals who have higher vitamin D levels do better regarding coronavirus. They don't get sick. These people do not get hospitalized if they are having sufficient vitamin D levels. Higher vitamin D levels are associated with lower risk of a severe case of hospitalization, ICU, or death. Intervention studies indicate that vitamin D can be a very effective treatment. And what they're calling for in this letter here, it states that two common definitions of inadequacy are deficiency. Less than 20 nanograms per ml, which is the target of most governmental organizations, and insufficiency being less than 30 nanograms per ml. Now, too many people, as it states here, have levels below these targets. And it has been shown that 3,875 IUs daily is required for 97.5% of people to reach just to 20 nanograms per ml, which is very deficient. And 6,200 IUs just to get you to 30 nanograms per ml. So the recommended to saying that once you get 30 and above, saying that that's optimal, it is far too low. And it states here that there was a statistical error in which the required intake is approximately 10 times too low. So doctors could be think, telling people that, oh, you reach 30, you're all good. But if you just reach 30, you're not going to have the thousands of genes activated by the vitamin D. You're not going to have even sufficient vitamin D to really get your calcium into your body for your bones very well if you're that low. You got to get to at least 40 and then upward from there. So it showed here that it's 10 times too low. And they actually made numerous calls in the academic literature to raise the official recommended intakes and this had not yet resulted in increasing it by the time of SARS-CoV-2 arrived. So it's still not increased. It's still too low. And now we have the coronavirus taking lives of individuals. So what they are stating in this letter, that the preponderance of evidence indicates that increased vitamin D would help reduce infections, hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and deaths. And even toxicity of vitamin D is very rare. So they are recommending a protocol which can be set in place so that people can raise their vitamin D levels. They are recommending amounts from all sources to achieve serum levels over 30 so that they can have a reduced risk of COVID-19. They're recommending adults to raise their intake to 4,000 IUs in the absence of testing. So if you did not get your vitamin D levels tested, 
they're saying at least start with 4,000. And there are certain groups which are at risk for deficiency because they may be overweight, have dark skin, or they are living in nursing care homes because they're inside, they need two times the amount of a regular person. So if a person is overweight, dark skin, in nursing homes, whereas they recommended 4,000, these people should get 8,000. And they are recommending that adults not already receiving the above amounts get 10,000 IUs daily for two to three weeks or until achieving at least 30 nanograms per ml. And then they're stating once you get higher, the body can synthesize more than this from sunlight under the right conditions because some people are scared when they hear of 10,000 IUs. But in the right conditions with the angle of the sun, and if you're outside in a sunny day, your body can create 10,000 or 20,000 IUs in about 30 to 45 minutes. So your body can create that and you will have no bodily harm. So if you have not taken it, more than likely you are deficient. And by taking 10,000 IUs will greatly increase your levels so that you will be in a good range. And they're saying that those who are in the hospital, these patients who have COVID-19, they should be treated with calcifediol or D3 so that they can get directly into the body the active form of vitamin D, not the cholecalciferol, they'll get the calcifediol so that they will get what they need while they are hospitalized in the hospital so that individuals can get better. And in this letter, you have so many different doctors. They all are stating in this, these are top, top experts on vitamin D. And in this letter, it shows the recommended intake and how much they personally take. And you can see that letter online. So it is that serious. You have a hundred doctors calling that we need to use vitamin D during this time period to help the people to get better. But as I said, the media is not focusing upon this because the media is just focusing upon getting this vaccine full of side effects, this vaccine which will affect your body in very bad ways and has not had sufficient testings. So as I stated, vitamin D is important to regulate the immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Ensuring optimal levels of vitamin D is a safe and easy way to help support your immune response. Now if you go to the website grassrootshealth.net, you will see tons pages upon pages of studies that are done just on vitamin D and how vitamin D is needed in the body and how it boosts your immune system. And as I stated, that letter is found on vitamindforall.org. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show a very short clip, less than five minutes, which will review some of the information I just shared with you. So as you see this little short clip, it will be more crystallized in your mind, the information which I was just sharing.
Now I'm going to share the top three supplements that I would recommend if you are not taking vitamin D because these three all have different benefits that are very good for the body. First I'm going to start with Sports Research D3 and K2. This vitamin D supplement comes in 120 or 60 capsules in a bottle. This is all vegan. It's the supplement is in coconut oil so therefore since vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin it will get in your body better because it will have the coconut oil and the K2 is an excellent source from chickpeas and it has 5000 IUs. I highly recommend this one because if you go to Amazon this supplement has 5 stars, 13,311 reviews. So that's a large amount of reviews and when I was looking in the reviews many individuals taking it has greatly boosted their vitamin D levels and are able to get to the optimal range by taking this supplement. So sports research vitamin D3 and K2 and for these supplements I will list them in the description and I will list in the description other information that I share today in this study. So for your additional research you can go and look at the description of this video. Second as I shared in the last video the Live Wise vitamin D3 and K2. This is a good supplement because it drops. It's high, highly bio available. It will get into your cells very quickly because it's liquid form drops. And the good thing with this one the K2 is from Natto which is the best food source of K2 and with this supplement you can greatly have a good way to adjust your levels in which you need because if you get tested and you see you need more you can put a drop or two more drops to get to the right level because each drop of this supplement has 1208 international units and 25 micrograms. So you see how much you need by the level after you get your vitamin D test and you will know how much drops you can get to. But with this supplement I would not advise to go over more than 8 drops because 8 drops will get you to 200 micrograms which is the um, limits for K2 daily use. And since K2 is also fat soluble K2 can also stay in your body. So I wouldn't go over 8 drops if you go with the live wise. And that's the one which I take and it got my level to get up into optimal level range. And lastly the perfect vitamin D3 and K2. This one is vegan and it has 5000 IUs and 50 micrograms. Also has reviews showing that individuals increase their levels. This one is highly bioavailable, gets into the blood cells and it's an excellent product vegan D3 5000 K2 50 micrograms. And as well you can get to the level you need and adjust to see how much supplements you need daily from that product. So as we can see brothers and sisters the media is not sharing the truth in regards to there is things that you can do to prevent this coronavirus. It is 99% recovery. It's not that serious for all of the lockdowns, all of the shutting down of churches, having individuals wearing masks all day long and closing everything, individuals losing their jobs, individuals cannot pay their rent. All of this is not necessary. This is the setting up of the new world order. This is what Rome is planning as to set everything in place for the enforcement of the mark of the beast. Having the individuals in the world already getting orders from government, step by step losing of civil liberties so that when the mark of the beast is enforced and Sunday is enforced by law, individuals will go along with that because they've been already listening to all the orders from the government.
But now is the time where we as God's people need to be sharing the truth, sharing the eight laws of health, and sharing the fact that vitamin D is what you need to protect you from getting sick from the coronavirus. We need not be fearful and we need not take any vaccine. The eight laws of health will protect you from any sickness. This is biblical. So let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I am so thankful for the truth. I am so thankful that you have raised the doctors all over the world who have done all of this research to share with the world that vitamin D can indeed help and protect us, not only with coronavirus, but to keep the body in health. I pray that many will not be fearful, but that they will put faith in you and that they will not be terrified of losing their job if they are having to take a vaccine they're being mandated. I pray that individuals will stand for the truth and that they would take care of their health. Please bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this Cleaver of Truth Bible study. And until next time, God bless you.